Controversy looms over elections in Senegal. The country's democracy may be at stake and its reputation for peace and stability hangs in the balance. So what are the challenges ahead as Senegal's president fights to hang on to power? This is Inside Story. Good to see you. I'm Shuli Ghosh. Welcome to the programme. Voters in Senegal headed to the polls on Sunday in what has been the most tumultuous election the country has ever seen. 85-year-old Abdoulaye Wad is running for a third term, sparking violent protests that could endanger the country's record as the most stable in Africa. Opposition groups say the leadership bid is unconstitutional. But as Andrew Simmons now reports, Wad isn't backing down. This is a nervous country, on edge about an election that's disputed before the votes are even counted. There are 13 opposition candidates, none of them clear front runners. Against an 85-year-old president who refuses to stand down after 12 years in power. No one was going to stop Abdullahi Wad from seeking this third term. Now voting is underway, attention is switching to the electoral process itself. The burning question, Will these elections be free and fair? And the fears of a return to violent protest if there's any foul play in these elections are growing. The European Union has already reported irregularities in the issuing of voters' cards. And it's investigating reports that large numbers of them have been bought from potential voters by the ruling party. The first worry is that there would be many voters who are not able to vote because they didn't get their voters' cards in time. And there are many young people who haven't get, got any voter card at all. So that's one problem. Many people cannot vote at all. Five to eight percent of the voters all in all, perhaps. Uh, another problem is that some voter cards seem to have been bought. And if your voter card is bought, you cannot vote. And this might influence the outcome in that there are less voters. Wad has steered a stubborn path. He's not a man for turning. If, as he predicts, he wins outright in the first round, he could face the biggest unrest his country has ever seen. Andrew Simmons, Al Jazeera, Dakar. Now, just before we came on air, I spoke to President Wad's official spokesman, Amadou Sal. He insisted that Abdullahi Wad's candidacy was allowed under the Constitution. President Wad is, is, uh, is elected by the Constitution of uh, the year 1963. And after he has been elected, he changed the Constitution. And in, uh, in the year 2001, we have a new Constitution. And in terms of this Constitution, President Wad was elected the first time in 2007. It's, it's not right if you say that it's not popular. President Wad is popular, and you will see this is a democracy. Even in London, now, right now, every day in the United States, people are protesting. So, is Senegal's democracy at stake? Let's find out from our three guests. In Dhaka, Adama Gay, a veteran Senegalese journalist. In London, Ayo Johnson, a journalist and director of the news website Viewpoint Africa. And in Pretoria, via broadband, Isaka Suare, a senior researcher and analyst on West Africa. Gentlemen, welcome to you all. Uh, Adama, let's start with you. Um, you heard there from Mr. Sal, uh, President Wad's spokesman, that uh, he's saying that they haven't, he hasn't broken the constitution because his first term in office doesn't count. The constitution was changed uh, after he was in office, therefore he's only served one term, not two. Listen, I think that... Uh, uh, Putting the question uh, under strictly constitutional or legal terms is the wrong way of putting it. Of course, Mr. Wade has hired, even paid, some uh, constitutional luminaries brought from Paris, from elsewhere in the world, and those people, including some within Senegal, have uh, defended that his candidacy is normal, is uh, uh, along the line of the current constitution. But the Senegalese people themselves believe that it's too much 
too long. He has been elected to promote democracy. Now he's clinging to power, which is wrong. He has come to power uh, in the year 2000 when Africa, under the new economic partnership for development, had promised the rest of the world that it would be promoting democracy. Abdullah Iwad has clearly reneged against that promise of promoting democracy. I believe that this candidacy is the candidacy of too much and in addition also because of his age, of morality and all his commitment for democracy, it is the wrong time for Mr. Watt to run for a third term. He has brought this country to really a, a very tough situation. Uh, but the Constitutional Council agrees with him, doesn't it? I mean, they have said that he can run again. So on a point of legality, there is a debate over that. Yeah, but some are saying that members of the Constitutional Council have been bought financially. Uh, they have been given uh, beautiful cars, uh, uh, pay raise, and even people are wondering whether uh, many of them really have not been just put there for uh, ensuring that Mr. Watt would be allowed to run for a third term. The problem is Senegal is not a resource-rich country. It is a country that has a lot of goodwill from the international community. It is a country that has been developing because of its good image, a good level of democracy. Now, this is being really challenged, as the whole world has seen, the violence clashes across the streets of Senegal, and this is due to the fact that people are desperate to see Mr. Watt out of the picture in order to give a new, lies, a new lease of life for democracy with new people running this country. I think, really, whatever the Constitutional Council has decided is not the right thing to have been decided to allow this man, who is almost 90 years old, to run again for another term, mm. which is too late. OK, let's go to Isaka Soare. Uh, clearly, there's a lot of anger in Senegal over um, the president's decision to, to run for a, a third term. Uh, how much are these actions damaging Senegal's reputation as a, as a bastion of, of stability and peace? Before I answer that question, if you may allow me quickly, I sympathize what Gay is saying, but I think we need to differentiate between our personal preferences and the uh, constitutionalism. Surely um, the constitution does allow him to, to, to run. Um, if I were to put my personal preference, given his age, as he was mentioning, I would really wish that he didn't stand. But we're talking here about something the opposition is saying is unconstitutional. Politics is not deciding here, it's the constitution. And as the speaker, the spokesperson of the president said, when he came in the, to power in 2000, he did that on the basis of a constitution that didn't provide for any term limit. So, so you, you think that is a, a, a proper argument, do you, that, that the first term that he served doesn't count because the changes came into effect after he'd served his first term? You, you think that's a, a legal argument? In, indeed, because it, it, there is a universal legal principle that laws cannot be applied retroactively unless it is explicitly s cited in that law. And two things, actually, because when he came to power in 2000, the tenure was for seven years, and also there was no limitation. In 2001, he established the tenure, the limitation to two, and brought down the tenure from seven to five years. Everyone agreed he served seven years from 2000 to 2007. No one disputed that. Why do we want to apply it partially? So I think my personal preference, because of his age, because of his anger, that he shouldn't be a candidate. But if we are reading the legality and we must read that, then I think he can be a candidate. Now answering your question, what does it do to the image of Senegal? It gives a bad image, given that it is a country that um, has been noted for its stability, even though we have had waves of violence before, including by what when he was in your position during the 1988 elections. This is unprecedented, so it damns that image. Mm. Uh I, uh, I, I know there, there's clearly an argument about whether uh, Abdullah Iwad is within his rights or not to stand for election. Uh, whether he's legally allowed to or not, uh, his decision is causing a lot of tension in Senegal. Absolutely. Um, he's a president who uh, was got a lot of support in 2000 when he came into power. 2007, people said fair enough, but changing the constitution to accommodate his own personal circumstance and to also to support all those who have been galvanizing around supporting him over the last 12 years is wrong because you can't change the status play, you cannot change the constitution, and very much so you cannot, um, on one hand, say you support democracy, you support the principles of it, but then you're prepared to change to 
accommodate your own personal gain. So uh, for that reason, many, many um, in uh, Senegal feel that it's wrong. Uh, internationally, he's been heavily criticized, and which is why the imagery of Senegal moving forward has been tarnished to an extent, because Senegal has been seen to be a beacon for democracy, a beacon for the rest of Africa, uh, a country that's not been marred by some of the, the, the ills that we've seen across the continent. So for that reason, there's been damage already. And uh, President Wad's age, if he were to win, um, would seem well into his 90s, which would not necessarily be a good thing, because uh, clearly, um, I think personally that he should be seeking retirement right now. Mm. Let's have a quick look back at, uh, at the presidency of Abdullahi Wad. Uh, he's ruled Senegal since the year 2000. The 85-year-old has long championed a United States of Africa. After his victory, Senegal was hailed as a model for democracy in the continent. Wad quickly earned a reputation for being a decisive leader who developed the country's infrastructure. But more than a decade on, his presidency has been marred by allegations of fraud, nepotism and limiting the freedom of the press. His attempt to seek a third term in office has angered the Senegalese opposition. But Wad says he needs three more years to complete his projects, fueling speculation that he's lining up his son, Kareem, as a successor. Uh, Ayo, let's come back to you because this issue of Kareem Wad, uh, the, the president's son, that is causing a lot of uh, concern, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, he's a man who already has excessive influence throughout government. He controls nearly four ministries. He's already been groomed, as w uh, many Senegalese think, that uh, he were to take over his father's mantle. And, uh, and I think it sends the wrong signals because clearly it's on one hand, Mr. Wad is being criticized for being in power for too long. Uh, and to have a son being groomed is giving the appearance that this is more like a family business. Um, the democracy in Senegal has got to be respected and uh, nepotism, tribalism uh, uh, and, and uh, poor governance, uh, especially to do with corruption, uh, is a major factor within the WAD um, uh, era. Uh, and clearly, currently, what we're expecting is for his son clearly not to take over and clearly for him, uh, if he were to win, uh, he must consider some of the options which have already been placed to him by Obasanjo, who is representing the African Union, who has stated that the seven-year mandate should be reduced to two years. Um, but sadly, um, many of the other presidential candidates, including Mr. Wad himself, have not accepted that deal. Mm. We'll talk about that deal in just a moment. I, I, I'm just interested to in hear from Adama, who's in Dhaka. Uh, what do Senegalese, the Senegalese public, what do they think about uh, Karim Wad and, and the possibility that, that he's being groomed for presidency, as Ayo has said? The Senegalese people, they discuss Mr. Karim Wad. They don't want him. They have elected Abdullah Wad to promote democracy in the year 2000. And they discovered that he had an hidden agenda. His hidden agenda was to create a monarchy out of a very age-old democratic system in Senegal. This is a real problem. And the gentleman who was saying earlier that it's personal, is not personal. Mr. Wad himself said in the year 2007 that he locked the constitution to not to be able to run for a third term. And he said himself that he has reneged to his commitment not to run for another term. So this raises suspicion that he wants to run in order to put in place somebody who can cover his back, namely his son. The other problem we have is that he has created few people who have been extremely wealthy out of resources of the states, and these are the people now that are competing, some of them backed by France and other foreign countries, and who could over, take over this country and be at the service of mercantilistic states. So we have a real problem. In addition, Mr. Watt is in, in this election probably in order to use fraudulent means. You have some electoral observers who are here, Probably some of them, I'm sure, are paid to uh, announce the election. You know, some of them, like the Observatoire for uh, Democracy and other lawyers' associations, some of them, they are not very credible, and there is a real risk that they announce results in favour of Abdullah Wad, well, you, which you, is you have got, coming you've, to discord further You have got the independent observers government. in Senegal. You've also got uh, the, um, the envoy, the African envoy, Olusigan uh, uh, Obasanjo, uh, who has tried to broker a deal or try to say that, well, if President Wad wins a third term, then uh, he should resign or retire in two years' time. Is, is any of that having an effect? Is any of that calming the situation? 
No, not really, because Mr. Wad is a very stubborn person. And uh, I met Obasanjo himself, I discussed with him at lunch, and uh, somehow uh, he was suspicious that he may not achieve his objectives. But the big problem is this. The African Union somehow has always missed the point in sending people whose credibility is at stake. Mr. Obasanjo is known to have tried to cling to power in his country for a third term. Is he qualified to come and ask somebody to uh, uh, get out of the way who is running for a third term? That's the same thing that happened in Cote d'Ivoire with Tabo Mbeki, who failed in other mediation in Zimbabwe, who has been sent to Cote d'Ivoire. And you can continue the list of mistakes by the African Union. So this is a real problem. Mm. Mr. Obasanjo's attempt has not succeeded because the opposition wants a postponement of the election, some part of the opposition, I mean. But ultimately, this opposition also has been weakened because what has the financial means and is ready to buy anybody that can help him sustain his objective, namely to create a monarchy out of a very old, age-old democracy in Senegal. Isaka, what do you make of that? And, and, and more to the point, what, what are regional bodies like ECOWAS and the African Union making of all this? Because we, the African envoy uh, is in Senegal, but the doesn't seem to have achieved very much. Yeah, but uh, um, yes, the, the, these organizations are very much concerned. If you look at uh, the um, committees that uh, the ECOWAS and AU have put in place, the observer missions, I think it is dangerous that we uh, declare what to have lost the elections before it, because it heightens tension. It's to say, unless the opposition won, then this election must have been rigged. Um, I think the electoral process in Senegal, uh, while what may be able to uh, rig it, uh, but it has proven itself uh, to be capable of rendering a, 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 a credible election. Um, there may be technical irregularities, but irregularities that may be accepted in other contexts. In this case, it might not be. Um, if you remember in April 2010, this very son of what Karim stood for the mayor position in Dakar against an opposition candidate. But what happened then was that the myriad opposition parties that were vying for that seat came together, formed a unified front and won it. And it was the same electoral process. In this, at this time around, you have 13 opposition candidates that are as vehemently divided among themselves as they are fiercely united against what? I think that's the main pro a, a big problem. So while we can actually apportion blame to what, but that is from my perspective, just based on normative approach, but from a practical approach, you really have to also look at the opposition and the opposition has to shoulder a share of the blame. And that's a good point to introduce the opposition. President Abdullahi Wad is among 14 candidates, including two women who are standing in Sunday's election. Among them are four major contenders that threaten to unseat Wad from office. Ousman Tano Jeng, the Socialist Party candidate, was a campaign manager to the former president, Abdou Diouf. He ran against Wad in 2007, winning over 13% of the vote. Mustafa Nias has run for president twice before. He once served as Wad's prime minister, but the pair fell out. He gained 6% of the votes in the last election. Maki Sal is running for president for the first time. Formerly a close ally of Wad, he also served as his prime minister between 2004 and 2007, before setting up his own party in 2008. And finally, the charismatic Idris Asek is a former prime minister and mayor of Senegal's second city, Thais. In the 2007 election, he finished second behind President Wad with around 15% of the vote. Uh, Isaka, you, you make the point that none of these candidates have united. They're all uh, divided amongst themselves. Why do you think the opposition is so weak? Well, they are weak because uh, the big guns of this opposition have personal problems. Maki Sal, you mentioned, and Idris Asek have both been prime ministers. Um, Maki Sal succeeded Idris Asek, and shortly after he left power, um, the uh, prime ministership, uh, he got into problems, and he blames that on Maki Sal. He got tried for corruption, he got cleared of it, but uh, he still has grudges against Maki Sal. Um, 
Tunnel um, Jeng and Mustafa Ni as well, both from the Socialist Party. Uh, but uh, Mustafa Ni has left the Socialist Party in 1998, and in the 2000 election, he ran in the first round. The second round, he actually rallied behind what? So many Socialist Party people will not forgive him for that. That is why they started talking about a united um, front of the opposition, but they failed because of these personal problems. Mustafa Nias also is 74. He sees this election as do it now or never. Whereas um, uh, 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 Tanor Jenk is 64, he thinks that he should be actually the candidate too. So you have these problems among them. So you cannot actually blame everything on what They have their own problems. Even if what were to go out of the picture today, you will not see also that calm and tranquil campaign that one would expect it because they would fight it out among themselves. Io, do you agree with that? The uh, the opposition have to take at least some of the blame for the situation in Senegal? Well, yes, because they've not been united. Um, if they had wanted to um, or seed um, Mr. Wad, they should have actually had one or two candidates and they should have rallied behind them. I think this election will become very much more interesting when, if at all, we move into the second round. It would apply excessive pressure on Mr. Wad because then the voting would have to consolidate under or around one or two main candidates that would split bring a lot of the split votes on the one umbrella and i think that would be the element by which wad can be defeated if at all but yes the weakness of the opposition has been seen for a protracted period of time in the senegalese politics very much so because of selfish and personal interest and uh, unwilling and unable to speak with one language which for all intents and purposes has been a failure for the senegalese people adama i can see you nodding do you agree with io there I think that uh, the major problem of Senegal has been that uh, this opposition has not really been able to take advantage of the many mistakes that Mr. Ward has been committing. So this opposition is part of the problem of Senegal. Uh, but in addition also the international community that has been inviting, Mr. inviting Mr. Ward to Afri uh, G8 summits and many events is part of the problem. I believe that Senegal also should have been like Niger Republic a few years back, two years ago, should have been suspended from participation at the ECOWAS uh, head of state meetings to, to put pressure on the country in order to ensure that Mr. Wad, in addition to internal uh, pressure, would feel the international community's pressure. But definitely the opposition is really part of the problem and we may end up having a situation whereby Mr. Wad will be pitted against Two people coming out of his own party, Mr. Idris Asek or Mr. Macky Sall, and ultimately that will not be democracy. That's what will be, as we called in the beginning of the democratization movement in the year 1990s in Senegal, a form of uh, demultiplication of one person uh, and not allowing really the broad spectrum of political ideas and uh, uh, trends to express themselves. And really the opposition being not strong to provide an alternative uh, solution way forward is part of the problem that we are facing in Senegal today. OK, uh, we're, we're coming to the end of our times. So I quickly want to ask um, Isaka, do you think that there are going to be problems with this uh, election? Uh, EU observers have already said that there are, there's some evidence of uh, irregularities in the number of voter cards that are being handed out. Are we going to see a fair election? Well, it's very difficult to say that, but it appears that uh, whatever happens, if what wins, the opposition will always say that there is a problem because they are already saying that uh, um, what's um, victory would equate up, uh, uh, that region. But my fear really, if, if Ward were to win, I doubt it, but if he were to win in the first round, then we would have a real a high probability of electoral violence. But if we were to see a second round, then I think that could calm tensions, and then we will see if some opposition candidates really rally behind Ward, which is not uh, to be excluded, and then we see others also rallying behind the opposition candidate. People will see clearly that, okay, we seeing something that is happening here before our hand which could lessen the likelihood of violence but whatever happens i think the opposition will say that it was rigged you may have some irregularities mainly in my view technical but um that the uh, the final outcome will have to wait and see that we cannot be able in uh, in my view to authoritatively um predict that at this time 
Well, gentlemen, we wait to see what happens. Thank you very much indeed for joining uh, today's discussion. Thank you to all my guests, Adama Gay, Io Johnson and Isaka Suare. And thank you at home for joining us. We always want to hear what you think, so do send us your feedback. The email address as ever, inside story at aljazeera.net. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.